Hello and welcome to Ottawa Green Homes. This is Volker Thompson's home. It's March 23rd here, an early spring day. And uh, there's a lot of green things in this home. Volker's, it was the um, president of St. Lawrence College. He, he owns this house here. Uh, you'll notice there's solar photovoltaic panels along the top of the home for electricity. Lower on the roof is some solar thermal evacuated tubes which are able to collect uh, heat from the sun to heat his, uh, his hot water for domestic hot water needs and that can be done even in winter. What's most uh, interesting about this home is that there's a, a system called an atmospheric energy system and what that means is that um, using the, the heat that's available in the summer it's able to be stored for winter use and that's particularly through a air source heat exchanger which is basically like a radiator that sits outside and it's able to take heat from the summer air passively and um, and put that into a ground store so there's a set of boreholes uh, there's a central set of boreholes that the heat is injected to and then there's a surrounding ring of boreholes uh, that the heat is collected from in the winter um, so this, it, it's very much like a geothermal system that you would see, however it can be built smaller and cheaper uh, because the system is able to factor in storage. Rather than calculating the size of the boreholes uh, to be so deep because you're calculating for heat from the ground, uh, they can be smaller because you're, you're storing that heat, you're putting heat into the ground that can be used later, which makes for a smaller almost like a heat battery in your front yard. That's the Volker house with the atmospheric energy system and I'll show you some more later on. Okay, so I'd like to explain a little bit about the solar uh, that uh, is happening here. So here we have a south facing roof and uh, the slope is quite good and there's I guess three things going on here. At the, on the back row we have solar photovoltaic panels. So those are panels that convert the sun's energy into electricity and they're forming an array on the back there which is connected to an inverter and that inverter converts the electricity from direct current to alternating current which is usable in your home and also can connect to the grid. Um, then uh, nearest to us those tubes that you see that's a solar thermal evacuated tube system so it's a it's a system that's able to, um, because of the, the tubes, there's a vacuum inside there, so they don't, um, they don't lose heat in the winter to the surrounding area, but the sun's energy is still able to go in and heat a, a copper pipe inside that's able to, to heat the water to sometimes 80 degrees Celsius, uh, even in winter. So this is a, a very efficient uh, solar thermal system as well. And that's used in this home to, to heat uh, for domestic hot water needs. Um, and I can, I can show you more on that later. Um, and then in between those two systems, there's a, uh, some windows. And those are uh, windows used mostly to, to heat the home. And it's, it's quite a large room. It's able to get more light into the home uh, when you need it. Another feature that I noticed on this house today that I'd like to, to mention is um, some passive solar design. So the front end of this house here is uh, there's a lot of solar gain and by solar gain I mean there's heat that's gained from, from the sun with exposure to windows on the south side. Um, but what you'll notice is that there's a, quite a, a strong uh, ledge uh, overhanging those windows. And what that means is in the summer months, when the sun is higher in the sky, those windows will have more shade on them, which means there will be less need for air conditioning. But in the winter months, when the sun is lower, you're able to see that the, the sun is able to enter the house and further into the house uh, to heat the home with what's called passive solar design. So not only that, I think it looks quite nice. This is the most innovative part of this house. Um, this is what... Uh, Volker and Ron Tolmy and David Wilson who have been involved in, in designing and installing this, they call it an atmospheric energy system. And the idea behind it is that uh, using multiple sources of heat, so in this case the, the summer air, 
So in the summer months, the air is warm, and there's an air source um, heat exchanger, a uh, very simple design that injects heat into um, two central uh, boreholes. So there's, there's two boreholes in the center that heat from the summer air, or in some cases, um, heat from the solar thermal panels from the roof, um, if there's excess heat from the domestic hot water, can be injected into two central boreholes. And then beyond those boreholes, there's, there's an outer ring of boreholes that are, are placed so that you can extract that heat uh, later, six months later, um, uh, for winter heating use. So what this does is it improves on the efficiency of a regular geo exchange system by factoring in heat storage. So you're able to inject heat into a central area and extract that heat using an outer ring of boreholes later on. So these here are, are normally buried underground, but they're visible today because um, they're, they're using instruments to measure the, the temperature to get a sense of what the temperatures these boreholes are so that they can see what's going on under the ground. This is the uh, heat exchanger. And uh, we have the aluminum heat exchanger in here with the, the fins on it. So it's designed to have uh, maximum heat transfer for a, a low delta T, a, a small uh, difference in temperature between the air, whereas uh, the car radiator uh, would have a higher delta T. Your engine would be running at about 100 degrees C and you're exhausting that into what maximum 40 degree air in, in Canada. So <clears throat> it sits here and it uh, doesn't make much noise. There's a little uh, commercial fan in the, the bottom there, a $30 fan. And uh, it sucks the air down those fins um, and you'll get quite a bit of condensation in the summer because the, the air is uh, is warm and, and humid and the uh, water coming out of the ground is uh, probably about uh, six or eight degrees C until we get it warmed up and uh, down here you can see the uh, the valves where it comes out there's one loop that comes out and goes through this um, heat exchanger and there's a, a little pump down there behind the, the screen Okay. And we've got these uh, valves to uh, let any residual air out of the, uh, the system and uh, top it up a bit. Okay, so I'm going to try and explain to you the, uh, the buffer system that we have here. So what's happening is there's, from the outer circle of boreholes, there's uh, pipes coming from the ground and that is this one here this is the the intake so this is from the ground and then below it is is a pipe system running back out to the ground so there's two tanks there's one tank here and another tank right here and what these do is these are our buffer tanks to kind of improve uh, some of the temperatures going in and out of the system. So uh, as the water level comes in, so if the if the water if the temperatures coming in are a bit low or if the demand is particularly high, that's where this buffer tank comes in. And these white tubes that you see here, they're connected and just basically placed beside the other tube coming in and it's it's a little heat exchanger. So what what this one does here, is it's basically a hot, an electric hot water tank heater and it will add heat to the incoming water which improves the efficiency of the heat pump. This is before it gets to the heat pump. And so uh, there's a water line here. It's a little hotter water. You can add that heat into the line before it gets to the heat pump. And here, this is on the way back out. So once the heat pump has taken the heat out of the water, it comes back colder. And what this does is um, this is filled with with plastic water bottles of water and then there's fluid that goes around those and what it does is that sometimes the water coming back is at or below freezing 
and so what it does is if that water freezes those water bottles inside of here when when the water bottles freeze they release heat into the into the water that's around them so the cold water goes in freezes those water bottles and those water bottles release some heat as they freeze to the water which raises the temperature a little bit as you send it out and what that does is it um, it just keeps the the out the the ground loops just that little bit warmer which improves efficiencies and this is using the the fact that as water freezes it releases heat uh, into the water before it gets sent out here we have the, the the tanks that are used for the domestic hot water and you'll see two of them here one is heated by the the evacuated tubes that we saw earlier on the roof and so this tank here is where that water comes in and it gets stored here so as the sun shines that heat gets stored here for your use and then there's also during the winter months or late at night there's the electric hot water heater here so you'll notice that this one is actually piped to go into this one so that it can preheat the water so if the water's you know almost there it goes into the electric hot water tank and it just has to heat it just that little bit more before it can be used if need be Okay, so I'm now beside the heat pump. So the ground loops that we were talking about earlier, um, these are the two pipes that come in into the heat pump. So there's one from the ground loops and then one returning back. So that goes into that box there and that's basically the same unit that you would have. Uh, it's a heat pump that's also used in refrigerators, air conditioners, basically pumps heat from one system to another. So this is connecting to the ground loop. So from the ground loop, the heat gets pumped to and from this system here, which is the connection to the air distribution. So you'll see the air coming in here, it returns, and then the pipes from the heat pump heat and cool the air, and then it goes and is distributed to the house. There you go.